the earth's crust is a major source of metals. Seawater also contains some soluble salts. such as sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, etc. The elements or compounds which occur naturally in the Earth's crust are known as minerals. At some places, minerals contain a very high percentage of a particular metal and the metal can be profitably extracted from it. These minerals are called ores. Extraction of metals. You have learned about the reactivity series of metals. Having this knowledge, you can easily understand how a metal is extracted from its ore. Some metals are found in the Earth's crust in the free state. The metals at the bottom of the activity series are the least reactive. They are often found in a free state. For example, gold, silver, platinum, and copper are found in the free state. Some are found in the form of their compounds. Copper and silver are also found in the combined state as their sulfide or oxide ores. The metals at the top of the activity series K, Na, Ca, Mg and Al are so reactive that they are never found in nature as free elements. The metals in the middle of the activity series Zn, Fe, PB, etc. are moderately reactive. They are found in the Earth's crust mainly as oxides, sulfides or carbonates. You will find that the ores of many metals are oxides. This is because oxygen is a very reactive element and is very abundant on the earth. Thus, on the basis of reactivity, we can group the metals into the following three categories. 1. 
metals of low reactivity two metals of medium reactivity three metals of high reactivity different techniques are to be used for obtaining the metals following in each category Several steps are involved in the extraction of pure metals from ores. Let us understand these steps in detail. Enrichment of ores. Ores mined from the earth. Are usually contaminated with large impurities such as soil, sand, etc. called GAN. The impurities must be removed from the ore prior to the extraction of the metal. The processes used for removing the GAN from the ore are based on the differences between the physical or chemical properties of the GAN and the ore. Different separation techniques are accordingly employed. Extracting metals low in the activity series. Metals low in the activity series are very unreactive. The oxides of these metals can be reduced to metals by heating alone. For example, cinnabar or HGS is an ore of mercury. When it is heated in air, it is first converted into mercuric oxide or HGO. Mercuric oxide is then reduced to mercury on further heating. Similarly, copper which is found as Cu2S in nature can be obtained from its ore by just heating in the air. The metals in the middle of the activity series such as zinc, iron, lead, copper, etc. are moderately reactive. These are usually present as sulfides or carbonates in nature. It is easier to obtain a metal from its oxide as compared to its sulfides and carbonates. Therefore, prior to reduction, the metal sulfides and carbonates must be converted into metal oxides. The sulfide ores are converted into oxides by heating strongly in the presence of excess air. This process is known as roasting. The carbonate ores are changed into oxides by heating strongly in limited air. This process is known as calcination.
the chemical reaction that takes place during roasting and calcination of zinc ores can be shown as follows. During roasting, the following reaction takes place. 2ZNS solid plus 3O2 gas on heating gives 2ZNO solid plus 2SO2 gas. During calcination, the following reaction takes place. ZNCO3 solid on heating gives ZNO solid plus CO2 gas. The metal oxides are then reduced to the corresponding metals by using suitable reducing agents such as carbon. For example, when zinc oxide is heated with carbon, it is reduced to metallic zinc. ZNO solid plus C solid gives ZN solid plus CO gas. You are already familiar with the process of oxidation and reduction explained in the earlier modules. Obtaining metals from their compounds is also a reduction process. Besides using carbon or coke to reduce metal oxides to metals, sometimes displacement reactions can also be used. The highly reactive metals such as sodium, calcium, aluminium, etc. are used as reducing agents because they can displace metals of lower reactivity from their compounds. For example, when manganese dioxide is heated with aluminium powder, the following reaction takes place. 3MnO2 solid plus 4Al solid gives 3Mn liquid plus 2Al2O3 solid plus heat. These displacement reactions are highly exothermic. The amount of heat evolved is so large that the metals are produced in the molten state. In fact, the reaction of iron 3 oxide Fe2O3 with aluminium is used to join railway tracks or cracked machine parts. This reaction is known as the thermit reaction. The reaction being Fe2O3 solid plus 2Al solid gives 2Fe liquid plus Al2O3 solid plus heat. The metals high up in the reactivity series are very reactive. They cannot be obtained from their compounds by heating with carbon. For example, carbon cannot reduce the oxides of sodium, magnesium, calcium, aluminium, etc. to the respective metals. This is because these metals have more affinity for oxygen than carbon. These metals are obtained by electrolytic reduction. For example, sodium, magnesium and calcium are obtained by electrolysis of their molten chlorides.
the metals are deposited at the cathode or the negatively charged electrode whereas chlorine is liberated at the anode or the positively charged electrode. The reactions are at cathode Na plus plus E minus gives Na at anode 2Cl minus gives Cl2 plus 2E minus Refining of metals It is very important to remember that the metals produced by various reduction processes described above are not very pure. They contain impurities which must be removed to obtain pure metals. The most widely used method for refining impure metals is electrolytic refining. Many metals such as copper, zinc, tin, nickel, silver, gold, etc. are refined electrolytically. In this process, the impure metal is made the anode and a thin strip of pure metal is made the cathode. A solution of the metal salt is used as an electrolyte. The apparatus is set up as shown. On passing the current through the electrolyte, the pure metal from the anode dissolves into the electrolyte. An equivalent amount of pure metal from the electrolyte is deposited on the cathode. The soluble impurities go into the solution, whereas the insoluble impurities settle down at the bottom of the anode and are known as anode mud. 